all right let's just do this update now because if i wait i'm literally going to finish the book before i say anything about it so i've read i've read this much um i have read exactly 187 pages i'm about to start chapter 20 bookmark stay in your place stay in your place uh, i'm about to start chapter 20 so nothing has happened literally nothing has happened i mean things have happened obviously because 187 pages with nothing actually going on but nothing majors happened so okay positives Let, let's do positives so book two starts off exactly well more or less exactly where book one left off great i love that i love when like series does that because the worst thing is when like you pick up the next book and you're like miles away or like several months later from where book the previous book left off that's so annoying and you're like but i want to know what this cliffhanger means and that's it um so yeah book two picks up right where we left off in book one awesome 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 now <laughs> if you were to accidentally pick up book number two uh, before you picked up book number one it can happen okay it can happen it can happen yeah <laughs> me picking up book number three of throne of glass before i picked up book number two and one it happened it happened okay don't judge me uh, <laughs> anyway um so if you accidentally pick up book number two before having read book number one you're gonna go like who the hell are these people because there's no explanation of anything you're just like thrown in and there's no introduction you know how sequels usually have some sort of introduction like a mini one like a sneaky one some books have like full-on biographies made uh for for all the characters which is super annoying uh, but you usually have some like mini introduction into the characters just you know get that fresh reminder back in unless you like literally because you an author cannot assume that you're gonna pick up the sequel to the prequel uh to the previous book right after you they can't assume that so they need to like make you remember as it were um there's none of that in this book so yeah you'd be very confused i mean you'd be very confused anyway but you'd also be pretty bored i suppose because literally nothing happens so what's happened i can tell you <laughs> in less words than this book has used so far so we pick up right where we left off which is we we are in the riordan castle fortress i don't know i don't remember what it's called the thing where the uh the the other people are in what <laughs> the rebels the rebels let's call them the rebels okay so the place where the rebels are that's where we left off in book one so that's where we start off in book two so in book one the, the cliffhanger and if you haven't read book one uh and you're planning to read book one i'm gonna tell you the cliffhanger now so you'd be very spoiled so that's on you okay that's on you anyway the cliffhanger in book one is that violet's brother who we've presumed is dead since like five years ago he's fully alive so violet is like we're staying in this fortress thingy uh for a little bit um for like five minutes uh because violet got very hurt in the previous book so she's like healing now um but we're, we're only staying there for like five minutes because we need to go back into the war academy because 
graduation that's the one graduation is happening so <laughs> So uh, we get very little information about this fortress, th this this rebel fortress, um, except that there's a lot of things happening. We do find out something about the wards and these ward stones. Apparently, there's more than was originally presumed, um, but that's that's a very little tidbit. We need more information on that. I'm hoping it comes in the rest of the book. I mean, there's a fair chunk of book left. So I'm hoping something else comes up of that because that's literally the only thing we have going currently is this little mystery. So we're in the Rebel Fortress. Um, we need to go back into the War Academy because otherwise uh, they're going to presume everyone's dead, uh, which they kind of do. So when they get back, to the academy um they're literally having like a count of all the the wounded the not the wounded the dead uh and so this is a funny part so they walk in and they call satan's name and he's like well this is awkward <laughs> yeah i did have a very good giggle about that because that's just hilarious that's just funny uh but yeah that is literally everything that has happened so far and for almost 200 pages that's not a lot to go on um i mean it's super easy to read you can follow along very easily you're amu amused you're amused um as far as that goes but so far nothing's happened <laughs> nothing's happened yeah nothing's happened jack's alive of course he fucking is. Of course he fucking is. Because no, not even a mountain crushing him would kill him. Didn't I say? Didn't I say? He probably survived being crushed by a tower. Jack is that kind of asshole character that just keeps coming back for more vengeance. Uh, what he has vengeance over, I don't know, but he's that asshole that just he's the fucking terminator the bad one the one that keeps coming back to kill Blech. where did we last leave off i don't remember see i read so much of this book and things happen but not like interesting enough to pick up the camera and say anything about it also i'm so bunged up it's Anyway, I uh, have now read 495 pages. I'm about to start chapter 53. So what's happened? What has happened? Good question. Why is it not sticking? So I'll say this. So when I read Fort of Wing, I just wanted to pick it up all the time because it was it was captivating in that way. It was just like, yes, give me more. This book, <laughs> I don't want to pick it up as much. I just put it down and for forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, what's happened? Um, so, basically, we have found out that but that long time ago when Violet's mum made the deal with Satan uh, to get all the, the the rebel kids. I can't remember what they're called. They're called something else. They're, let's call them the rebel kids. Kids. Um, to get them into um, the academy and to like have a chance in life. Um, she made the deal that when Violet enters the academy, Satan's gonna look after her. That's interesting. Yeah. And then she, her mum got mad at her because, uh, yeah, she didn't expect uh, Violet to bond with the mated dragon of Satan's dragon. I mean, who could have expected that? No one could have. The dragons do their own choices. Uh, but then Violet's mum is like, well, I'm so disappointed in you. 
<laughs> because she's chosen, Violet's chosen to follow her feelings for Satan. And her mum's like, no, you naughty girl. <laughs> Not really those words, but it was more fun saying it that way. So basically, um, we're, we're told that um, the leaders, so Violet's mum and all the other dudes, um, they've known about the like the Griffins and the Griffin Riders and the um, the the Wyverns and all that jazz. Um, and she tells Violet, her Violet's mom tells her that um, she was going to tell her as soon as she got like when she finished the academy training thingy, basically. Um, and so now they do they get the dragons to basically make the choice to share it with their riders. <laughs> um, so some do and some don't, but I think most do. I don't know. Uh, and then the choice is to stay at the academy or leave. And I think most of them left. I'm not too sure about the amount of riders, dragon riders that left, but yeah they left so they've left the academy to go to is it the ryerson house i don't remember what it's called but the 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 rebel fortress let's call it that my brain does not want to remember this book apparently um so they've left they're in the Ryerson house uh, where they're basically going back to school uh, so they have some lessons um, that uh, like pertains the like real history and stuff like that so their education is not finished yet <laughs> um, so yeah that's basically where we are and they're like trying to figure out this, these uh, ward, th ward things oh oh the the griffin the griffin people the those riders they so they went to the other place where basically the the griffin people live wow explanations words um because they have this thing that's kind of needed for the wards uh but they don't want to share it they don't want it to leave their place so that's hard thing uh, <coughs> my goodness i gotta stop with the coughing it's driving me crazy um but anyway so the griffin riders and stuff they've come and they've like merged with the dragon riders so now they're kind of like training to become a team so um the different wings and sections and thingamajings uh they have the griffin people too and one of the griffin riders just happens to be uh satan's ex because yeah uh so apparently they were betrothed uh basically uh his family and her family wanted an alliance so they betrothed these kids um and they tried a relationship and it didn't work according to satan uh, they weren't meshed but the way this girl I think her name was Kat. Possibly. Uh, the way this girl is like tormenting Violet about it, uh, yeah, she still has feelings for Satan. Satan may think he doesn't have any feelings for her, but she has for him. She has not let him go. <laughs> um, I think that's about it as far as this. The things go there's one thing though that kind of drives me crazy so violet and satan they're all like lusting for each other but their lusting is like oh, but can't you see how much i want you the, the this must this is this is how much i love you so yeah that annoys me because love and lust is not the same thing and the way it's like portrayed in this book is that love and lust is the same thing and people are gonna read this and be like 
yes, this is how it feels, but it's not. I mean, it can be, but it, love and lust is not the same thing. And it's, uh, it's like the Twilight thing. So Edward Storks Bella and people are like, oh, that's so hot. And Bella is like, when Edward leaves, Bella is like devastated and stuff. Yes, sure, abandonment issues. Uh, but then she's like, she's afraid to be alone. She could have literally had any other dude do the same things that Edward, but she's like obsessed with him. And then people are like, well, this is love. No, it's not. It's craziness, okay? It's craziness. Yeah, so that annoys me. Yeah, it, it, it annoys me, but because people have problems separating fiction from real life. So the way when we read something like this, like this, like love and lust is the same thing, it kind of goes ingrained in our brains for most people and not, well, not maybe most people, but for a lot of people, it goes and it, they go like, oh, this is so hot. This is the right thing. No, it's not. <laughs> it's it's really not. It's terrible. It's bad. It's, no. No, no. <laughs> Satan has a second signet. But it does, I mean, I mean, it does make sense in a way because we've known about the like shadows and stuff all along. That's, that's never been a secret. But there's something about him that he's just very intuitive. Uh, and that's basically his signet. He's, he can like not read minds. He can read like the intuition to not intuition to but the the intent to do things uh so he's very intuitive he's like way more intuitive than the normal average joe so it makes sense it does make sense but also what <laughs> it's funny though because it's like we're putting uh we're giving more power to the like the, the mains uh, and we're just waiting for things to blow. It's like Viola has two dragons when everyone has barely one. Uh, I mean, some people doesn't like bond with a dragon, so they don't have a dragon, but. Well, that was a cliffhanger ending. What? Well, what? What? What the actual what? Okay. Okay, let's let's back up. Let's back up. So, um, the dude that like sees the future, Colonel, I don't know, Melbourne. The dude that sees the future. So he's seen that there's a battle. The 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 venom are going to attack one of the uh one of the outposts. Um. I think it was Samara or something. The the place that Mira was stationed at earlier, but she's she's like far gone. She she's not far gone. She's uh she's not there. Um so basically they send all their like active military from the uh the war academy to this outpost to, you know, defeat the Venom. However, what he can't see is when three or more of the scarred the the rebel kids let's call them that because it's far easier to remember um he can't see when three or more of them are in one place so he doesn't see that the venom are about to attack the the big place where the wards are yeah that's what they do yeah, shit goes down, shit goes down, ah, oh, so many things happen, so, <laughs> uh, 
Violet figures out what the missing key is because they did get the wards up back in Raiden Fortress thingy, House of Raiden, that place. Um, but it wasn't fully functional because there was something missing. And the... Yeah, she's a scribe. Um, the scribe that just signs. Um, she uh, comes with them to the War Academy. I can't remember names, okay? Um, and she kind of translates something which makes Violet figure out what the missing key is. Um, the missing key just happens to be Andara. Because apparently there aren't six tribes. Let's call them tribes. I don't remember if that's the what was the word, but let's call them tribes. So they're... Um, there are like six colors of dragons, which are different tribes. Um, and that's what the, she figured out earlier that you needed the dragon breath of the strongest or whatever of each, each one. But apparently no, it was the six plus one, the seven, the seventh missing key, which is Andarna, because Andarna is that missing breed. <laughs> She isn't black like she's pretending to be currently because she wants to be like tan and tan is you know black um no she's she's a very dark purple anyway so she figures out that that's happening and she needs to imbue this um wardstone thingy and she basically almost burns herself out in the process just about turning herself into venom. I guess. I don't know how that works. Seriously works. Um, but she's like standing there like shooting all her power from the dragons and stuff. And she's like, I can totally see why they're like this power hungry because holding all this power in my hands is... Oh. I mean, sure. Uh, but then her mother comes in. Brings one of the the scarred kids, the rebel kids, um, that is Liam's sister Sloane, and she has the the signet to, um, what was it? What's it called again? Basically, she can take power from one thing and she can siphon power, something like that. Um, and uh, her her mum, Violet's mum, is like. Well, she sacrifices herself, basically. She takes, makes Sloane shoot all her power into the thingy uh, to make that work. So Violet's, Violet, Mira and Brennan's mum is now actually dead. I'm starting to wonder about the dead parents thing, because they said that um, their dad died like of a broken heart when Brennan died. And I'm wondering if that's actually the case. I'm starting to wonder if that's actually the case. Because he knew things. Being a scribe, he knew things. Because Violet's mum made... Not Mira. Violet go into the um, the war thingy. Uh, the, the dragon, the rider thingy. Wow. <laughs> because she was afraid that... Violet going into the scribe quadrant would get her killed. Like being a dragon rider isn't gonna get you killed, but apparently she was gonna get brutally murdered before then because she was gonna find out things that she was not allowed to know yet. Anyway, um, so Violet's mum sacrifices herself, all her breaks loose, they win whatever battle they have. Violet runs over to Satan, who's had his own little thing, and he's like, good, you got the water up, you're going to feel a lot safer. She's like, from what? From me. Well, I'm not completely sure about the, the thing, but he's either turned or is in the process of turning venom. Because she sees those red-ringed eyes and she's like, oh shit. <laughs> and that's Violet's last chapter. So the, the proper last chapter is 
uh, Satan point of view. So this is what I don't understand. So she sees and understand that he's like turning or has turned Venom. And yet, in Satan's point of view, he wakes up sleeping next to Violet. So is she like still trusting him, even though he's technically turning evil? What is the thought process here? I want to know. Anyway, so he wakes up from a dream. Presumably, he just dreamt about what happened to him, his battle. So we can see like what happened, how he actually turned and stuff. That's what I'm guessing that dream is. Um, but he wakes up and he's like, fuck. <laughs> so he goes to, I don't know, the dungeons, uh, wherever they're keeping Jack, because Jack, Jack the asshole, he turned long, long ago. He apparently turned Venom and he's, yeah. So there's that, but they're keeping him like, I don't know, a hostage or something like for guinea pig purposes. I don't know why they're keeping him, honestly, because yeah. Um, but Satan goes to him and is like, what's the cure? Tell me the cure. And Jack's like, there is no cure. <laughs> oh my god what a fucking cliffhanger I will give Rebecca Yaros the props for this because damn can she put in a cliffhanger oh damn so now we need to know more because um, so there's this like what is those little thingies like ahead of the chapters so the last thing um it said before like satan's point of view is we have tried every method we know of as you requested there is no cure there is only control i mean they're talking about the um that the the venom problem so We need more now. So where is book three? Do we even know when book three is coming out? Let's check. Let's check together. Do we have any idea? What's it called? Fourth way. It would be great if I could spell. No! There is no information! <laughs> So the only information I have here is book one and book two, which I just read. Uh, and apparently they've done a book one and two combined thing. Why? So, no idea when book three is coming out. No idea. I'm hoping they're doing like, so the first one came out in May, I believe, and the second one came out in November. So I'm hoping they're doing like a book three comes out in May. Because that would be great. I'm not yearning for it as such, but I do want to know what the hell is happening. I want to know more. I need the next information, please. I need everything. I need all of it. <sighs> well, oh damn. Oh damn. I'm going to, I'm going to think about my life choices and I'll be back. Hiya, I'm back. I'm sorry about that. The dishwasher is on in the back, but I've just been editing this vlog. Oh my God, the chaos, the mispronunciation of words and things. I mean, this is me in, in a nutshell, but basically I'm just going to end this vlog here because chaos uh so if you got this far thank you so much for watching and i shall see you all next time until then take care oh boy